The regulators would even greenlight such a deal. We turn to the former vice chair of the U.S. Surface Transportation Board. William Clyburn joins us now from Washington. Thank you for joining us. Hey, good afternoon, my friend. Based upon everything we know at this point, would you, if you got to make the decision, greenlight this deal? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, having been one of the three commissioners that voted on the new merger rules and doing the moratorium, uh, I'm not going to prognosticate or speculate, but I can give you some insight in terms of what the concerns are in terms of moving to the next round of mergers if that's where they decide to go. Uh, and so I know that we have some other former commissioners and chairs that have spoken to this issue. Uh, but one of the things to keep in mind is that public interest is going to be the key words to think about. And when we talk about public interest, we're talking about efficiency. We're talking about making sure that there are no anti-competitive effects in the net result of the mergers and making sure that things run smoothly for not only the shippers, but the other railroads, the railroads that are merging themselves. And let's not forget about the labor force and other entities that are involved. So the idea that a merged company would be able to take a train and carry a load from the port of Vancouver all the way down to Florida, does that create an unfair competitive advantage in the space, do you think? Well, one of the things that the Surface Transportation Board traditionally has been mindful of is that they want to protect competition, not necessarily competitors. And so there may be some benefits in terms of efficiencies uh, when you have something that goes all the way from one part of the continent to the next and it's very smooth in their transition. However, we've also seen traditionally that there have been a lot of anti-competitive impacts from these mergers that have had these uh, results that are supposed to have been so positive. So that's what you're going to see the Surface Transportation Board pay very close attention to, not only the benefits that are being talked about, but also the potential harms. What are the potential harms as you see them? Well, whenever you have an integration, as what, when I came over to the board in 1998, and then in 1999 when we voted on these transactions, and then in 2000 when we did the moratorium, and 2001 when we did the rules, there were a series of service interruption problems. So we had the Union Pacific, Southern Pacific merger, uh, we had BNSF even before that, and then we had the Conrail acquisition. And so while I did not vote on those transactions, I had to deal with the cleanup with the service disruptions that came and emanated from those mergers. And so we have integration issues such as IT, or when two railroads are trying to merge their cultures, or you have locomotives and trains that are not getting to the shippers on time. Uh, shippers become very concerned about inconsistent service. And so when you have those types of disruptions, it causes a whole lot of concern, not only for Wall Street, but for the shippers and for the railroad. And let me just add also, when we had hundreds of witnesses and pleadings, uh, it wasn't just the shippers and the railroads, but it was labor groups, the Department of Transportation, the Department of Agriculture, and yes, even the Defense Department, because this is such a critical infrastructure. It sounds, though, like these are the kinds of problems you don't get until after you've approved any given merger. How do you ensure that these issues don't arise um, until after the, I suppose, the, the doors open and the horses have left the barn? Right, absolutely. You've done your homework. And so that's the challenge in trying to prognosticate or try to figure out. But because of the service disruptions that have happened before, and because we're getting now to a certain particular place where you have only a limited number of class one railroads, the large railroads. And so what's going to happen if you have another merger between two class one railroads? Well, you have to try to figure out and look around the corner. And so that's why the Surface Transportation Board, and that's why we put in there in regards to downstream effects, crossover, public interest which has always been a part of what the Surface Transportation Board has done, but has been named and put explicitly in there so that people understand that this is a whole new realm, a whole new paradigm. Before they were trying to rationalize excess capacity, now they're trying to make sure that there's smooth transition and efficiency in the current operations with the rail infrastructure we have. Outside of the logistical issues that raise concerns for the U.S. Surface Transportation Board, what about the holding structure that's just been proposed by CP Rail, creating that holding company that runs the two railways independently until regulators come to a conclusion? What's your thought on that? 
Well, uh, uh, without getting into the specifics, since I don't know the exact plan, and, and I wouldn't uh, try to uh, get in the way of what the Surface Transportation Board is trying to do. One, the Surface Transportation Board is an adjudicatory body, so they adjudicate disputes, but they also promulgate rules. And so one of the things that they have to kind of look for with the voting trust, you'll see in a couple of places in the regs, in 1013 and in 1180, they're talking about independent nature of the voting trust. And now we have this uh, development where it has to be in the public interest. So regardless of what type of mechanism, methodology that they use, as long as they have to make sure that it's independent because the Surface Transportation Board is going to pay very close attention to that. Before we let you go, you'd be uniquely qualified to give us some insight into this, William. Uh, CP Rail says the ability to go from uh, Vancouver to Florida scenario allows it to bypass Chicago, get around that uh, hub that's already congested. Norfolk Southern says it's the exact opposite. What do you say? Oh, well, oh, in regards to uh, the issue about moving around Chicago and looking at trying to create efficiencies and to create a circumstance where you don't get bogged down or have bottlenecks or circumstances where the rails are not moving, uh, without speaking to the Chicago piece and the details of that, uh, we had the issue in Union Pacific, Southern Pacific, and other mergers where we had in Houston, for example, uh, where the rails could not get the product where it needed to go. And it created such an emergency that we had to do 1518 to have emergency orders to come in there and get other rails to come in there to help move the traffic. And so it has to be mindful that regardless of whether it's Chicago or Houston, the whole point was that that was not expected, that was not anticipated that that problem would occur. And that's why the Surface Transportation Board is now talking about the public interest, because they now have to take a look at what happens if a problem occurs and what are you going to do to make sure that that anti-competitive effect is mitigated. And so that's a big issue and that's going to be something that the Surface Transportation Board is going to take a very good look at in terms of how to make that move smoothly. William, we appreciate your insight into the inner workings of the STB. Thank you for joining us.